Welcome back to the Getting Things Done with Notion series. In the first video, we built a strong foundation by capturing all scattered thoughts and tasks in our lives. But now, what do you do with a mountain of information? It can feel overwhelming to have so much captured, but without a clear path forward. That's where this video comes in. Today, we will transform that chaos into a structured, actionable system by diving into the next crucial steps clarify and organize. Now, join me as we build the structure of your productivity powerhouse. The clarify and organize steps in our GTD Notion system are like the scaffolding in a construction project. They are the essential supports that might not be visible in the finished structure, but without them, the process could crumble. They allow us to move our building blocks to the right places ensuring everything is stable and secure. The Getting Things Done book provided a workflow to further break down this process into three stages. Clarify, categorize, organize, or take action. First, we start with clarify, which is like laying down the base plate for our scaffolding. The goal is to get a clear picture of what each task or piece of information really means making sure that every decision made aligns with our broader goals. Next is categorize, which acts as the frame, giving the scaffolding its shape and stability. Here, we ask ourselves questions like, is this actionable? What's the next step? And how much time will this step take? These questions help us determine where each item belongs. And finally, we move into organize or take action. This is where the platform comes into play. These surfaces allow us to stand and work efficiently, just as organizing lets us create a system where tasks and information are easily accessible and manageable. Once organized, there are eight possible outcomes for each item. If it's not actionable, am I going to the trash, be deferred into the maybe or someday list, or filed as a reference? If it is actionable, it can be categorized into these five groups. I've tweaked this grouping slightly to fit what works the best for me. So feel free to do the same as you develop your own system. The workflow you just saw has been integrated into a toggle tree in the inbox, making it easy to reference daily. Let's walk through a couple of examples to get comfortable with this process. So on the left here are the captured items we discussed in the last video. The first one says, change the icon of the home page to something with a brighter color. So what is it? Sometimes the intention is exactly what you've written down. Now let's walk through the workflow. Is it actionable? Yes. How many action items does it require? Just one. Does it take less than two minutes? Yes. That means we've arrived at our destination. Do it now. This brings us to a strategy I found incredibly helpful, the two-minute rule. If a task takes less than two minutes, do it now. So I'll quickly switch back to the home page and change the icon. And just like that, we're done. Personally, I often extend the two-minute rule into a five-minute rule. However, if you're someone who gets easily distracted by small tasks, be careful with this approach. You don't want it to become a distraction or a way to procrastinate. Here's how I manage it. I only process my inbox once a day during daily review, usually first thing in the morning. And this is when I use the two or five minute rule to handle quick actions. During the day, if something small comes up, I capture it and wait till my next daily review to process it. In my experience, nothing has been so urgent that it cannot wait a day. Capture now and process later. Now, let's go back to the inbox. Once an item is clarified and organized, simply delete it. Here's another quick example. Read chapter 15 of GTD again. What is it? I want to reread the last chapter of the book to refresh my memory on the different levels of GTD mastery. Is it actionable? Yes. How many action steps does it require? One. Does it take more than two minutes? Definitely. 
It doesn't need to be done on a specific date, but I'd like to do it as soon as possible, so I'll add it to the next actions list. As you can see from the decision tree, there are seven possible outcomes from the clarification and organization step. Follow this thought process and use the buttons to place each entry into its respective category. Fill out all relevant fields, and in the next video, we will discuss how these attributes make decision-making easier in daily practice. If you can't find the right category tag in the drop-down, open the home page in another tab and go to category tag under quick access on the right. You can add or change groups as needed. Personalizing the tags helps making the system work better for your needs. Among the seven possible outcomes from categorization, Two are immediate actions. Either do it now for tasks under two minutes or trash for non-actionable items. That leaves us five databases to manage the rest. Remember the quick access menu on the right side of the home page? That's where you'll find three of these destinations, projects, waitlist, and references. We briefly touched on category tags earlier and we'll dive deeper into my horizons in the final video of this series. The last two databases, Next Actions and Calendar, are front and center on the home page. You might have noticed while filling out the fields for each category that each database is set up a bit differently. Let's explore what makes each one unique and how to use them effectively. Projects is the most extensive and detailed database and is where I spend the most time. In GTD, a project is defined as any task that requires more than one step. This can range from something as simple as research and purchase skincare to something more complex as designing a Notion template and sharing it with everyone. To truly get a project off the ground, it requires more than just adding a title to the database. That's why there is a note in the inbox reminding you to create a project plan and review it for action steps. The Getting Things Done method offers several project planning strategies, but the one I always gravitate towards is the natural planning model. Let's walk through it with an example. A few weeks ago, I was preparing for a garage sale. So to start, I need to define the purpose and principles of this project. By now, it's clear that in the GTD world, we love defining our goals and purposes up front. This front-end thinking is critical to the success of your system. Having clarity about your intentions ensures that your actions align with your goals, so no effort is wasted. For this project, my purpose was to prepare for the upcoming garage sale by going through the house, gathering everything I wanted to sell, labeling each item with price, and setting up tables. As for principles, I wanted to have the right amount of items for this 5-hour event. From past experience, I knew the crowd would likely include older people looking for household items and families with young kids interested in school supplies, so I should make sure to cater my items to these groups. I also learned from previous sales that having predetermined price tags is essential. Next, what's the expected outcome? There are a couple of things I wanted by the end of the preparations. 1. All sale items properly labeled with prices and organized on tables by price and category. And 2. Cash prepared and everything ready to open shop sharp at 7am. Now brainstorming and organization. For these steps, I've linked a whimsical mind map template in the project, which is a tool I like to use for project planning. Not all projects need a full brainstorming session or detailed milestones though. For example, for my garage sale, I didn't need an extensive planning, so I just jotted down a few items I thought I should sell and moved on to the next step. For action items, I always revisit my purpose, principles, and expected outcomes to make sure that everything I do aligns with my vision. For this project, I needed to go through the house and gather items I no longer need. I divided these tasks by location, assigning an action to each part of the house. When creating action items, I like to keep it simple. One line equals one action. This approach helps me gauge the time required more accurately and gives me a more detailed view of the project. Once all the action items are listed, the planning is done. 
And remember, not all projects need such detailed mapping. While planning for complex projects can take up to an hour, most can be done in just five minutes. Personally, I prefer to capture the project titles during my daily review and map out the project planning during my weekly review. With the most complex database out of the way, the rest is straightforward. Waylist is where you capture potential projects or actions you like to do in the future, so you don't have to worry about forgetting something interesting or valuable. A brief description of the project, place to visit, or book to read is all you need to remind yourself later that this might be worth pursuing. As for references, this is your digital filing system. Store useful links, articles, or anything else you want to revisit later. You can view references by category or projects, making it easier to locate what you're looking for if the list gets long. There are various views to help you prioritize and decide what to do next. Actions from project planning also end up here. So you have all your action items in one view when planning for your day or your week. We'll go into more details about utilizing this database in the next video. All items added to the calendar are in this database, but I prefer to view them in Notion Calendar. If you're like me, you might have a personal calendar, a family shared calendar, and more. By using the Notion app where everything is synced, you get a more holistic view of your schedule, making it easier to decide what to do when. By clarifying and organizing all captured items into their respective databases, you've laid the foundation and built the structure for your Notion Getting Things Done system. Think of each database as a room in the house. While it might feel like there are too many rooms to manage, maintaining their structure and tidiness is actually hassle-free, as long as you stay on top of a regular reflection and review schedule. In the next and final video of this series, we will unlock the keystone of your productivity system, Reflection. And then, we'll finally move into the Notion GTD house by engaging with the system that you've carefully built. See you in the next one!